focus a little on the uh, on the freedoms part you know arpit had briefly spoken about censorship aspects and everything so the cronenberg universe is something that's completely banned on the journey you cannot prompt images from that because of the level of gore and they are a certain number of uh, keywords that you can't be using in these forums so you know generally people are talking about the regular hits like freedom of speech and all that stuff but here we have freedom of thought and the ai is playing like spoil sport i'm like i'm a huge zombie movie fan i'd love to maybe explore zombies in the cronenberg universe but that's not possible i mean how do you like see this and how do you address this issue limitations of thought arpit i'll go with you first Ron, I think uh, again, pardon my uh, lack of context on this one, uh, but I think from a censorship resistance point of view, I think the whole movement of Web three is uh, at its core uh, that right that you are uh, you know you are running all of this backend infrastructure on smart contracts which is spread across let's say ten thousand different nodes right so uh, and that too in different geographies in different uh, jurisdiction and all of that right so so essentially the uh, the idea of regulating some content or idea of regulating uh, what kind of thoughts can be shared in that so it is something which has to come from within that community and cannot be imposed externally right so. Uh, and essentially that's where the things are also moving so uh, you know not not really related to this but i was having a interesting conversation with people in regulation space right so they are now uh, so they they now recognize that to regulate or maybe even to participate in this ecosystem it is essential for them to uh, to you know come inside this ecosystem and not uh, look at it from outside to even to meaningfully communicate within that ecosystem so that's the uh, that's the trend and that's 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 where things are going to go right so it is going to be uh, so eventually what's going to happen is that a lot of uh, strong communities are going to develop for example you know art communities and all of those communities uh, maybe you know powered by some dao voting and all of that and that those communities are going to eventually decide so there can be a lot of different things which Uh, which become important there you know what is your reputation within that community what kind of voting power do you uh, do you carry right so i mean i just want to add something there i'm sorry to butt in but i have to like this also corresponds to harshit's earlier point uh, you know between the haves and the have nots so now what's happened is i'm have i had to take like the 50 dollar subscription for my journey that gives me a private room um, now i can essentially do what i want in there so you know again even though it's decentralized and everything but somehow it's still pointing us back to the age old model it no, seems so like think, that inescapable for some reason i think no it's not in- inescapable what is going to so essentially you know that's that's what i mentioned right we are currently using the frameworks that we created for example uh, using the money that you have that financial power that you kind of uh, uh, you know exercise there by buying that particular room that is maybe how this specific platform works right but essentially yeah. you know what may end up happening is let's say there are uh, let's say art communities right where uh, the voting or whatever goes on inside the voting rights depend on the reputation of the person as an artist so there arpit does not get a say uh, you know get to say what uh, what type of content will be banned or what kind of content should be created because that 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 essentially is something uh, just by having let's a whole lot of money buying a lot of tokens that does not kind of give you that that right to exercise that uh, power within that community right so essentially now what is going to happen is dao voting etc is going to evolve so currently let's say we have uh, a singular way of looking at things the number of tokens that you own may be directly proportional to the voting rights that you carry inside that community right but eventually it is going to evolve for example uh, at uh, but at you, it's the same problem there you know more votes more tokens so it's again yeah, so concentration in, at in some soul uh, i think uh, in each soul uh, vitalik bitrin he shared a pretty interesting thought there you know around soul bound tokens and how dao governance should evolve so the whole cons the whole idea was that we should evolve from this very uh, very singular kind of a metric where your tokens uh, give you uh, you know specific right to vote to more nuanced ones you know there can be soul bound tokens depending on the community participation that you have had so on and so forth so the idea here is that it's uh, basically no, building credibility in the community exactly maybe credibility can be one uh, your reputation as a artist can be second your participation in the community can be third right and all of those things so which which are totally different from the money that you hold 
uh, in terms of tokens and all in form of tokens and all of that so idea is that these communities may may choose to regulate themselves internally depending on a lot of different parameters that they may have uh, the way they choose uh, but the the whole idea behind this whole web3 movement is that it should it it needs to be that uh, you know censorship resistant uh, layer where no external party comes and tells what to what will go and what will not go right so but yeah sure. this is this is what i feel that uh, things are going to evolve into definitely harshad i love for your your take on this man uh, what do you feel about the band words on my journey currently right right i i think i i uh, sort of do uh, i mean i just want to throw in one thing uh, you know one of the thoughts you can use is a bad band word in a good way as well you know it's it's it, it doesn't always translate the same so yeah please absolutely absolutely no i i i mean so i at this point i think uh, obviously my journey is hardly like 3 months old uh, or maybe even less than that right and i do sort of uh, agree with what arpit is saying in terms of you know this being a lot of the models currently being borrowed from sort of the earlier way of thinking about uh, how the web2 infrastructure has been laid out um and the commerce around that um and as sort of there is like all these sort of um, notions of thought policing and uh, banning of words etc are obviously a double edged sword in some sense where uh, if that was not happening uh, we might have seen a flood of imagery uh, that was uh, very objectionable to a large section to large sections of society right and then we would have questioned this whole aspect of Uh, why weren't mid journey engineers uh, and creators more mindful of uh, not mm-hmm. letting people go into spaces that uh, sort of are are objectionable uh, but at the same time it's obviously like who is mid journey to decide what is objectionable <laughs> or not right so i think that whole sort of uh, uh, like this like the both sides of the coin do definitely exist and i think that is the core philosophically of what web3 and blockchain in some sense is trying to solve right so uh, imagine sort of a space where uh, something like a mid journey evolves into uh, into something like a web3 native space where the idea of um, it evolving into a dao comes into existence let's say where the ability to vote on the words that can be used or cannot be used becomes a more communal process instead of a uh, a group of 10 12 engineers who built mid journey deciding sort of what gets banned or not and i think that that but is even there, you know if when it started about it again but the way the community is being added obviously we have like a barrier to entry there with people who are able to pay for 5g internet or good laptops and they mm-hmm. have an understanding of discord so then your you know nuances can come from there maybe if north america was the first one to get a huge user base up and they started voting a lot of the keywords they might have banned a person from the middle east might feel totally different about it but you know they sort of enter the community at a much later stage so that that is also something that affects. yeah and and i mean another like take to uh, or angle to this i think which is critical to also engage with is the whole idea of um how machine learning ai is being used by platforms that have grown exponentially right like facebook etc for uh, sort of restricting content on their platform so these automated systems uh, end up often times perpetuating bias further and banning content which was actually uh, let's say like the the image of the kid uh, during the vietnam war became uh, something famous that got banned uh, on facebook right and it came out yeah. as something that uh, should not have happened because and it was simply an ai system recognizing that as nudity and just uh, not knowing the context at all right or what that image uh, showed and so sort of if at some point like uh, you start also like uh, engaging or using automated systems to uh start uh, policing what uh, is shown on a platform or not then that also leads to another layer of uh, sort of uh, bias perpetuity and complexity that we have to uh, acknowledge and engage with and i think um, to again like go back to what arpit was saying so it, think, it actually feels mm-hmm. like this issue needs to be addressed at like multiple different layers every single absolutely time. absolutely and mid journey or any such platform will have to start uh, using automated systems in some ways right because 
the the moment this like they're already growing very fast and the moment they hit a certain sort of threshold there's no way that you can have human moderators simply take up this job and i don't even want to get into what human moderation uh, is about yes. and how well, we've seen that on reddit how much and of, how ugly uh, it can get yeah exactly and what sort of psychological trauma the human moderators go through and and they're subjected to low pay pay etc so i think there's th- this issue is definitely much more deeper and nuanced and i do feel um, that uh, web3 and the ideas of of dows offer a sense of uh, uh, an approach of a solution to this space where the whole idea of both like moderation and uh, uh sort of training in some sense the words that need to be banned etc can be distributed across a system of people rather than a central entity sort of owning uh that right so i think uh, that would be my take on this but this is definitely a multi layer sort of uh, balancing act has to be yeah. man yeah. i'm saying question for you but it's a little more intricate for you because the yeah. curator well, and uh, you know uh, the, uh, you, along the way i'm sure you must have curated a lot of you know controversial artists uh political artists uh, uh, in fact i believe there was an incident at jlf also uh, yes. when it started off so this is a very sensitive subject so the censorship censorship and you know the haves and the have nots i mean these are all questions that i think uh we grapple with on a everyday level um i've worked with 10 of the biggest galleries in uh india and i and also with some very well known uh, sort of um institutional spaces as well and i know that there are pariahs in that space as well there are subjects that you cannot touch artists who create work and uh, firstly i mean not even web 3 like even web 2 uh, just the nft space itself has broken open a lot of that you know has it, it it's disrupted this particular space so we've been able to counter that kind of censorship by including artists who would otherwise not have a chance in the gallery ecosystem i mean uh, it also collapses sort of like the spatial geographic uh, uh, you know censorship nationalism um, our exhibition right now has artists from india pakistan bangladesh um, Iran and you know what's happening in Iran right now. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Uh, so uh, you know the, so, so it's an incredibly disruptive space so definitely we are dealing with issues of censorship um on all sides both from the right and the left. <laughs> we had a speaker at the um at the at our opening not the opening but actually a couple of days later we had another panel and uh Shazia Ilmi was invited to it and uh she uh, there was new york is is uh, in many ways uh, there's a lot of cancel culture and uh i thought that she yeah. was in voice uh, for jlf jlf is a platform for many voices and the diversity is actually uh, to have conversations around diversity is so important and uh but there was a lot of there was a lot of attempt at canceling uh, her voice out and uh, i thought that and i come from a human rights background and the show obviously i really appreciate your of, inclusivity point of view yeah, i do <laughs> thank you and i i felt that it's a it's a show about uh, uh you know the politics of representation the fact that <clears throat> shazia is a minority voice in a majoritarian government uh definitely is interesting i would want to know more about it so i thought that it, it was good for both jlf and for us to stand our ground uh in many ways uh you know the exhibition got even more attention <laughs> than it would have and i think people, and 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 the surprise factor of of that of coming to see an exhibition that um was attended and and spoken at by someone who is perceived in a particular way uh i think that actually was i think i just i just want to add an extra point i honestly felt like with the incidents surrounding uh mr salman rushdi mm. uh the jlf happening in new york at this particular point in time mm. had a little more meaning to it that yes, any absolutely. other absolutely 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 any kind i mean i think extremism and this uh, this notion of you know tra- wanting to control what gets seen what gets heard um 
the right and the left are not different from each other quite honestly for me they are mirror images of the same we are not interested in that conversation whatsoever